You know, sometimes we fall off the wagon during our weight loss journey. I mean, life happens and those old habits that are really not good for us sometimes creep back in. And we really don't want to step on that scale because that scale is not going to lie to us about how badly we fell off that wagon. And what my scale showed me was truly horrifying. Welcome back to my weight loss vlog. If you are new to this channel, welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope you stick around to the end. And for those of you who have subscribed to my channel and have been following my journeys, you know very well I've had two substantial tries during this weight loss journey and this third go at it is my third and final. Three is the charm when it comes to my weight loss journey. For those of you who want to see my past journeys in this weight loss realm, you can go click on the iCard up there or I'll put the playlist link down below and you can check them all out. But my first weight loss journey started back in 2014 and at that time I was I believe 294 pounds and that was the first time I met my amazing trainer and now dear dear friend Christy. She is a miracle worker and in 2014 to 2015 she helped me lose 80 pounds. And I have a photo of the before and after. I think I took it when I had lost 70 pounds, but I lost an additional 10 pounds after that photo. So we worked out all the way through 2015. And health-wise, after losing 80 pounds, I felt amazing. But in late 2015, things in my life had started to change and I made a business decision that in hindsight, wasn't the best for me and uh, in 2016 I had started working what was equivalent to two full-time jobs and because I was working 80 90 hours a week that didn't leave any time for me to work out with Christy which I had been working out twice a week with her I barely got a chance to talk to her and I fell back into a lot of my old habits bad habits bad eating habits not exercising and I quickly in 2016 gained 50 of those 80 pounds back. Towards the end of 2016, I realized my mistake. I quit one of the jobs I had to bring my hours back down to a normal level. But even after backing down my hours, I didn't go immediately back to Christy, which was another mistake because I let those habits that set in while I was working the two jobs, man, those habits came back full force and strong. And I continued those bad habits and gained, I think, another, oh, I not only gained all the 80 pounds back that I lost, but I think I gained another 13 on top of that. So in, I think it was like June of 2017, I reached back out to Christy because at that time I was 306 pounds. I had never been that heavy in my life. And I was really starting to feel all the bad health end of it because trust me you're at that weight you feel lousy and I started back with Christy in the summer of 2017 and again she knocked 30 pounds off of me right away I think actually we got to almost 40 we were like at 39 pounds so I worked out with her from summer of 2017 but there was other things happening and I wasn't balancing uh, my business very well and basically I stopped sleeping very much. I was sleeping like three to four hours a night. I wasn't taking my water. So even with Christy's help, I was more maintaining after I lost those initial 39 pounds. And I stayed working out with Christy until the summer of 2019. Had I not been working out with Christy and her constant reminding me of what I should be doing, I tell you my weight would have ballooned right back over the 300s. But I was able to maintain it up until the summer of 2019. So in the summer of 2019, I had actually developed like a psoriasis on my arms and it was severely aggravated by sweat and heat. Well, if you're exercising, <laughs> especially if you're exercising at this size, uh, you sweat a lot and the heat, in, I live in Arizona, okay? And it got to the point where I could not exercise or be outside at all without having just horrible, horrible itching. And this condition would go away, but you were supposed to stay cool and dry <laughs> to get it to go away. Well, by the time that happened, Christy had actually retired from training. And those 
bad habits I had came back like a tidal, a tsunami just overtook me. And I went on eating binges like I have never eaten before. I was out of control. And from the time I stopped working out with Christine that summer till December of 2019, I had not only gained the 39 pounds back, but even gained more. The last December, something happened that was really like a light bulb moment for me. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that because it has been life changing for me and really inspiring me to restart this journey and be successful this time around. Now before I tell you what happened in December that really was the aha moment for me, I want to talk about people that have really inspired me in this journey. And first and foremost, I want to talk about my family. They have been extremely supportive. My parents have been wonderfully supportive, even all the way back to 2014. It was my parents who offered to pay for me to seek out a trainer and help me find Christy. And even most recently, they have provided me with a source of nutritious dinner dinners, healthy dinners, low calorie dinners, that actually my trainer Christy, who happens to be a personal chef too, she is cooking them for me. So they have financially helped me do that, which has been a game changer for me. So my parents have been wonderfully supportive. Next, I have my three children. My kids have been so unbelievably supportive through this, always encouraging me, uh, partnering up with me to do, whether it be exercises or whatever, they help me in my business. My oldest son has provided a lot of the music you hear here on my channel. He is a wonderfully talented uh, music composer. And then my youngest son, he is an amazingly talented 3D artist and he has been helping me create graphics for not only my channel but other things in my business too. And he is always very supportive and provides humor when I need it the most. And then there's my daughter. She is my right hand person and I will, I'm Aww. gonna try not to get emotional so that she's behind the camera right now. <laughs> She's always been there. She's been a partner in my business, just an amazing woman, and she has encouraged me every step of the way. She has talked me off the cliff, so to speak, when I was at my wit's end, and she has brought me back down to earth. She encouraged me to restart this journey, and she wanted to document it from the start. And I gotta just put something out there for you guys. When you're overweight, and you have someone videotaping you exercising, um, <laughs> It's not easy, oh my God, uh, to see yourself in those videos. But she kept telling me when I say, I don't wanna see what I look like. She's like, mom, your future self is gonna thank you for this. And here I am, my future self, and I'm not thanking me for it. I am thanking Emily for that, my daughter, because I am so thankful to see where I've come. If she hadn't insisted on documenting this journey, I wouldn't have been able to see the progress, number one, and I wouldn't be able to share it with you and hopefully inspire someone else. Because like I said, it's not pretty when you're this size and you're exercising. I'm just gonna put it out there right now, okay? <laughs> And it is really taking a lot for me to show this footage and I will show you some footage of my exercises. But again, you know, in your head, you're thinking when you're really working out hard and you're sweating, you're like, oh yeah, I'm doing it really well. And then you see the footage and you go, oh my gosh, that is a scary sight. You know, I thought I was doing these deep squats and it looked like I was going down two inches on the video. <laughs> A real eye-opener, you know, you think you're doing these great sit-ups and you're like, no, you're barely making it up. But having that footage and having her join me on all the workouts I did with Christy, and she is the next person I want to talk about that's been in my life supporting me, my amazing trainer and dear, dear friend Christy, she came out of retirement to help me out because she could see how out of control I was getting. And she's always been there, not only when we're working out together, but she's like, text me your weight in the morning, text me when you have a problem or if you have a question, I have been able to text her night and day anytime and she's bam, responding, helping me out, getting in my head, getting my head on straight. I am going to share with you later in this video some of the things that she has told me that have just been mind-blowing. I'm so thankful to have her in my life. When you start a new journey like this, you often go to YouTube or you go online to get tips and hints and strategies to do things. And there have been five individuals where through their videos, it has been truly inspiring. And so I wanted to share that. The first one I want to talk about is Michelle. She has a YouTube channel, Michelle Makes Muscles. And I'll put the link to her channel down below. I happened to catch 
her restart. She had started a year before, dropped off, and then she restarted her journey at the beginning of this year as well. And I just automatically felt a kinship through her videos. She, Everything she talked about really resonated with me and inspired me and, and made me feel like I really wasn't alone in this journey. She's about the same weight I am, so it really helps when you see individuals. So go check out Michelle on her channel. She really does have relatable content. And knowing how she helped me and watching her, I wanted to restart this series because I'm hoping that if there's anyone out there who's going through this, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what your journey is like. You know, if you've had some of the similar obstacles like I have or that I'm talking about in this video, okay? So please don't be shy. It is an all positive zone here. The next person I want to talk about is another YouTuber. He's very, very popular. His name is John David Glaude and he has a channel Obese to Beast. He's had his weight loss journey where he lost 160 pounds and looks amazing and he has kept it off for many many years I think he did his first he did a video in 2014 where he was showing all the loose skin from that but I really love his content it's he's very inspirational so I will leave a link to his channel as well go check out obese to beast he has wonderful content and it's been inspiring to me as well another youtuber I came across that I've really enjoyed listening to is Alan Roberts of every damn day fitness I'll put the link to his channel as well he has a lot of great content I will warn you he does use some pretty strong language um, the F word has dropped quite a bit. I mean, the information he shares is solid. I really enjoy watching his channel and a lot of what he says has tremendously helped me in that I've had some fears that I will talk about later and I thought those fears may have been me just being too skittish or making excuses and things like that. And in watching his channel, I found that the fears and concerns I had were valid and he shared some good information that would help me get through those concerns. So go check him out and just cover your ears a little bit for the uh, added colorful language, okay? <laughs> Another YouTuber I've been watching a lot lately is April Lauren. She is on a journey to lose 200 pounds and um, I just adore her channel. She is the sweetest thing and I enjoy watching her videos. She brings a lot of good content in. Again, all the links to these channels are in the description below, so go check them out. If you are on a weight loss journey, they have wonderful content for you to follow. And then the last person I want to talk about is another YouTuber that I happen to meet up through YouTube. I haven't met her personally, but we have corresponded through Facebook and YouTube, and that's Mrs. Sonia Elaine. She shares fitness and fashion and food videos, and it was in one of her fitness videos that she happened to recommend some products that she felt was really helpful. Two of the items she mentioned have been game changers in my journey and I will share those with you as well. So I wanted to bring all these people up because I might be referring to them later on in this video, so I wanted you to kind of know who I was talking about. Okay, so let's talk about what happened last December. For me, that was the aha moment that really changed everything for me. Now, if you've been with this channel, you know I'm a professional organizer, and when I started my first weight loss journey, I was always talking about how the path to organization and the path to weight loss are often parallel journeys because the concepts in each one are very similar. And as with organizing and hoarding, the psychological concepts that bring you to hoarding are the same, often the same ones that happen when you overeat. It's an unhealthy relationship with stuff or an unhealthy relationship with food. They are very much identical. In my very first video, I basically titled it, I'm a professional organizer and I'm a hoarder. I didn't hoard stuff. I was perfectly organized in that area. I hoarded pounds and food. So in December I had a revelation that really made me rethink my relationship with food. And I always try to figure out why I always turn to food. You know, if I'm sad, I would eat. If I was stressed, I would eat. If I was happy, guess what? I ate. <laughs> no surprise if you look at me. But I couldn't figure out why. Why did I need that? Why did I feel such a strong compulsion to go grab food? For me, what I discovered in December kind of connected with my personality. Now, a lot of people who know me, I'm a control freak and I am a perfectionist. So when something goes out of control for me, my perfectionism and my control freakness kind of goes out of whack. I was able to look back in December and realize that my weight gains over the years, my huge weight gains, always correlated with some type of loss 
in my life. And it's interesting because oftentimes hoarders are triggered by a loss, a loss of a loved one or something like that, and that's when they start grabbing stuff in. I didn't grab stuff, I grabbed food. So in December, my parents reached out to me. They were getting very, very concerned about how large I was becoming and asked what could they do to help. And I mentioned that dinner times were my trigger for eating through the whole night and I needed a healthier alternative. And so they reached out, he, they said, you know what, we will provide you dinners through this journey. So they reached out to Chris who makes healthy meals she's a personal chef and they purchased every single night's meal for me and they have been since December now you would think that once I started receiving these delicious meals that Christy makes that I would just be gobbling them up right no I found in December that I stored all of them in my freezer and I only ate two that whole month why it was my fear that someday I might not have these meals so I must and save them for that event. I was gearing myself up for the loss. I had a long history of anything that was really great was often accompanied by a loss. So I conditioned myself to think that all oh, these meals are great, I must save them because the other shoe is going to drop. Huge revelation for me. That is my relationship with food. I had to get over that. You know, when, when, Chris, when my parents and Christy found out that I had been hoarding her food, <laughs> I wish I would have taken a picture of their faces. <laughs> they couldn't believe. And I know it may not make sense to a lot of people, but I was so worried about losing her food that I was going to hoard it and not use it. So I realized that my overeating with food is really tied in with when I feel I lose something that is out of my control. When life happens, some of those things are out of my control and the fact that I can't control them is what triggers me to eat. It took me realizing that I cannot control what's gonna to happen to me in this world, but I can control how I respond to it. So that was the revelation. I had to control how I responded to it. And that was the revelation I had been looking for for years. I am a psychology major. You think I could have come up with this sooner, but no. So what I have done now is I face those what ifs. I have said, what if this goes away? How am I gonna handle it? And having a plan in place, again, this is how it matches and what I've preached to all my organizing clients is having a plan in place is crucial. You cannot go without a plan if you want to organize a room. You have to have some kind of idea of where you wanna go so you know how to get there. Same thing with my eating disorder. I had to figure out a different way if that event happened. And having a plan in place for those eventual bad things that happen, it allowed me to stop those bad behaviors and using food to get through those bad times. So that very unhealthy relationship with food is what helped me balloon all the way up to 319 pounds. 319 pounds is what I weighed at the beginning of this year. Now let me tell you what you feel when your body is 319 pounds and you are five feet, four and a half inches tall. Well, we'll say five, five. Give me that extra half. <laughs> anyway, let's talk pain. Now I have experienced physical pain in my life. I have sprained ankles. I have sprained my wrist. I have broken my fingers. I have broken my toes. I have gone through labor three times. The pain I felt when I was 319 pounds and I felt that pain daily, every second, every minute, I felt pain somewhere in my body. I felt excruciating pain in my knees and in my feet. I was constantly out of breath. I mean, my gosh, I took two steps and you'd hear me huffing and puffing. I could be sitting and I would be huffing and puffing. My blood pressure, oh, that was healthy too. 150 over 100, mm, not good. My feet and my ankles, constantly swollen. I felt like Aunt Marge in the Harry Potter movies, you know, where my feet and my ankles would just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the skin stretching that much, it constantly, the tops of my feet would constantly itch because they would be so swollen. It was horrible. My shoes didn't fit right. I couldn't even sleep very easily. It is so hard to roll over when you are overweight in bed. So you can only sleep in certain positions and those positions you constantly have to shift. Otherwise you're in more pain so you're not getting good sleep. And then when I tried to get out of the bed, I'd have to set my feet down gently, get them used to the floor, just sitting. Then I'd go to stand, and then I'd have to feel the immense 
weight just go from the top all the way down to my knees and feet. And the pain while I just stood there. And then I have to get used to that pain. And then I take the first step and feel that pain. And then I take the next step and feel that horrible pain. It is painful to be overweight like that, especially morbidly obese like I am. And I was having trouble even like standing up from my desk, getting out of the car. It was horrible. And then I want to talk about the fear. You know, you live in a state of fear about falling. Here's the thing. You can fall when you're 120, 130, 140 pounds. And you might get a little bruise. You fall when you are morbidly obese, you are going to be hurt. I did fall, take a fall when I was around 300 pounds and I have never felt gravity like I felt in that fall. When you have 300 pounds coming down on these bones and joints, it is like you're taking a, a sledgehammer to glass. It feels like your body's going to shatter and that is a real possibility. So I lived in fear of falling. I felt out of balance because again, I had so much fat here, I'm walking different and you're waddling and you feel like you could just topple over. You can't see things in front of you because the stomach's way out. It just seems like the potential for injury was so high and so I was always afraid of that so I stopped doing a lot of things because I was afraid of hurting myself if I got up and walked and I would fear if I had any chest pains you know it could just be indigestion most likely you know but you, you always think is this the big one that's gonna take me out everything around being overweight was just miserable so that's kind of what propelled me back into this journey and there have been things that I've heard from whether it be youtubers or people around me uh, friends and family that have really helped me out and I wanted to share them with you to see if, that, if they resonate with you too as well. And you know, when I just talked about the fear of injury, I kind of felt, I never told anybody about those fears. And it wasn't until I was watching one of Alan Roberts' videos, you know, from Every Damn Day Fitness, where he said, Any type of injury like that, any load bearing injury to a morbidly obese person, comes with its very realistic set of dangers that could be life-threatening. It made me feel better that I wasn't being a wimp, that I wasn't making excuses about this intense fear I had of injury, of what could happen if I took a fall or when I would try to walk. The pain was so bad and I had to pay attention to every step I took because if I landed wrong, the pain would be unbearable and I'd almost fall over with the pain. So it really helped me to hear that and I thank him for saying that. It just kind of validated, helped me understand that. I was not looking at it as an excuse. Again, with the revelation I finally had in December, I was on a path to how can I make this work? And in my mind, I had decided to focus on the food as much as I could and let the exercise happen as safely as possible when it happened. And I was so happy when I came across a video by John from Obese to Beast, where he shared a saying that I think he said he had heard it, but he had said, weight loss happens in the kitchen, fitness happens in the gym. And I'm like, okay, we need to focus on the weight loss. So I am in focusing on my food. For me at 319 pounds, I could maybe set a little bit of the exercise back while I focused on the food. And I also have to say something my awesome friend Christy has told me and all the times we've been exercising, she would always remind me you can't out exercise a bad diet. So she says the, the starting thing always happens with the food you're putting in because no matter how much you work out, if you're putting crap in you and tons of calories of that crap in you, you're never going to work it off. So that really helped me be comfortable with the decisions I was making regarding watching my food and then going into exercise. But I knew I had to get moving because one of the things Christy has always told me is that the more sedentary you are, the higher the level of pain. And that is so true that when I have editing days for these videos, when I have to sit for hours on end, the pain in the joints come back. So I know I need movement. What's so wonderful about working out with Christy is she has been with me since 2014. She knows my injuries. She knows just where she can push me and where she lets it come back and she has modified countless exercises to accommodate the weight and not put any damage on my knees or my feet and I'm so so blessed and grateful to have her in my life. She has made it possible for me to keep moving through all these times. And another thing Christy has shared with me that really has resonated and I hope if you are struggling with food addiction and cravings at any time of the day, here's one thing that Christy told me that really helps me and I remember it every time I get that craving when I'm really not hungry. She said, when has eating crap ever 
made your situation better in any way. She says, does it make you feel health-wise better after you eat it? Well, no, I actually feel very tired. When I eat crap, I usually want to take a nap after it. She says, has it made the, the problem you're facing go away? No, it hasn't. Has it ever made it easier for you to tackle that problem? And actually, no, it hasn't because when I've eaten crap, I lose my motivation. So I have no energy to tackle with it. So in no way does eating crap make a situation better. Is it going to make you feel better? Is it going to take away the pain? Is it going to make take away the problem? What is? How is it going to help? You know, so that really resonated with me. So I thank her for that. And then one other thing that has really helped me a lot in this journey, I need to lose 180 pounds. I felt the strongest when I was about 140 pounds. So that means when I started on my journey at 319, I need to lose about 180 pounds to get to my goal. So I was watching a video of John's from Obese to Beast, and he had mentioned a saying of... Are you one of my favorite sayings? I didn't make this up, but I, I heard it from someone. It, it was a guy that lost a lot of weight. He's like, I didn't lose whatever it was, like 200 pounds. I lost one pound 200 times. <laughs> Mind blowing. That helps so much. And again, this goes, why I didn't think about that too. I always tell my clients, don't look at the overall project that you have to organize take it down to small manageable parts like don't look at the whole room or the whole house that you have to organize just look at a drawer or a shelf and yet it's the same thing with losing weight don't look at the 180 pounds look at losing one pound 180 times oh that works for me so I hope those things that have meant a lot to me will help you okay when I talk about some tools that I've used that have helped me in this journey. And again, if it helps you, I mean, everyone's gonna be different on this journey. So, and it's, that again, goes right along with organizing. I always tell people there's no one size fits all organizing plan for everyone because everyone is different. And I'm sure that's the same with weight loss. There's no one way to lose weight. It has to work with you. So I'm hoping, you know, here and there, something resonates with you. I'm just gonna tell you what has worked for me you can try it out and see. One of the things that I noticed in another video I watched of uh, John Glotz, which was his obese to beast, he talked about this calculator that would calculate how many calories you need to maintain your weight. And I think it's called a TDEE, Total Daily Energy Expenditure Calculator. And I would put in my height, my weight, my age, uh, but it gives you how many calories you need to maintain your weight. Now, as everybody knows, weight loss happens from a deficit. and so having that maintenance calorie level helped me determine where I wanted to set my calories so that I would be operating in a deficit to lose some weight. But that helped me. That was, that was a tool that very much helped me in planning my meals and how many calories I was going to put into each day's meals. The next thing that is totally a tool that has helped me is journaling. I am a very visual person and so if I don't have it down on paper I can't see it. I can't say oh yeah I kind of lost a little sleep that time maybe that's affecting my weight loss or I ate late that day. You know I need to see it and that way that in my mind that's proof so what every day I do I put down on this little template what my starting weight was that day how much sleep I got the night before how many ounces of water I literally have little check boxes for eight ounces so every time I drink eight ounces I check a box off so I can see the total at the end of the day did I hit my gallon goal and then I have each meal and I also have a spot where I put in what time I ate because I wanted to see if the time of day affected my weight loss and then I also calculated the calories but I also put on the bottom of the sheet non-scale victories and then also just a little area where I could put my side thoughts. Did I have difficulties that day? Did something happen? Just so I have a kind of a guide of how my life is going because life is too busy for me to remember. And at 55 years old, memory is not working so well either. So having it down on paper can let me refer back to it. It helped me figure out what was going on in my body. Is sleep affecting it? Is water affecting it? Is it that I had, you know, too many calories? Did I eat late? I can see when I ate. I could see if I was skipping meals. That sort of thing helped me out. So having a little template or some kind of journal to put all those pieces of information down helped me figure out what the heck was going on with my body because I gotta tell you, <laughs> Menopause, going through menopause and being postmenopausal, you realize that every morning getting up is a new adventure and what's going to snap, crackle, or pop off. So you don't know what's going on with your body after menopause. So it just helps give me a guide, okay? Okay, so now I want to talk about my approach to exercising. When you are at 319 pounds, exercising is a very scary thing. Any movement is scary. And the fear of always injuring yourself very real. But I had to look for new ways to exercise because even when I was working out with Christy, we primarily did a lot of arm work. 
and that was so I could support myself in getting up and down too. She still worked my the lower half but I was in a lot of pain and so we were constantly having to back off. I realized that I needed to find a different way to get some exercise and movement in that wasn't so weight bearing and the first thing that came to my mind was water, pools. I know every time I get into a pool that's the one time I feel like I am as physically fit as anyone else because that water just takes all that weight off and my muscles can do what they were meant to do. My joints can do what they were meant to do. But the problem was I really wasn't at a place where I felt comfortable being out in public at a public pool trying to swim laps or walk laps and get those get that exercise in there and I really oh my gosh I wanted to find a place where I could just do laps and I thought one of those endless pools would be great I thought that would be something I'd really like to do so when I was went online and searched I happened to find a local physical therapy place there called Harper Physical Therapy and they had a facility use fee that I could pay a certain amount a month and go in and use their pool it was like the biggest gift in the world. Their monthly fee was very easy on the budget. It wasn't that much at all. And it allowed me to set appointments to reserve the pool so I could do laps and I could do all sorts of physical therapy. They provided me with some exercises to help the pain in my foot. And anytime you can get in the water, that really helps. Because also you're not pounding so hard on those joints too. Again, the water's lifting you. So swimming was one avenue I took to get some movement and exercise in addition to what I was doing with Christy. Another thing that has helped me get back into other exercising is I really love going for walks but like I said it was way too painful and it was when I saw Sonia on Mrs. Sonia Elaine her channel she had a video where she was showing her favorite fitness equipment and in that video she was talking about these little compression socks to help with that pain that you can get from when you're arch when you have like flat feet and you're hitting that nerve and she showed me these these were available on Amazon and right away I thought what have I got to lose I really want to start walking so I went ahead and bought one of these this part just holds the area by my arch so nice and tight that when I go walking anymore I used to feel those like sharp stabbing pains in my foot for every single step of my walk and by a quarter of a mile I was like done with these socks on the other day I was able to walk a mile and only had like three times that I felt that little sharp stabby pain and I didn't feel the tremendous pain after the walk okay so now we're at the point where I'm going to talk about how much I have lost since I started this journey. In January, I weighed 319 pounds. As of August 5th this year, I weigh 283.4 pounds, and I think that's a loss of 35-ish pounds, 36-ish pounds, somewhere in there. So that's a really nice scale victory for me. So let's check out the pictures and see what it looks like physically, the non-scale victory of this 35-pound weight loss. So this side view of me, you can definitely see there's a difference in my upper stomach. That was really sticking out a lot further on January 2nd, and you can see how it's kind of gone down. Looks like I lost some in my chest, but I'm also noticing at the bottom of my shirt it looks a lot less tight. Then if you check out this front picture of me I personally see a difference in under my neck my little turkey gobble thing <laughs> there. It's a little thinner it's not as full you're actually seeing shadows there and again that front view of my upper stomach I think that's a big difference. Now my favorite the back photo. Ugh. Okay uh, in January you can definitely see that big roll right underneath my bra strap. It is really bulging out there and it has come in quite quite a bit with my 35 pound loss. I can also see a difference in the space between my arm and my waist. If you look in the first picture there's just the tiniest little color of the screen behind me and in the August 5th picture you can see a lot more space between there. There's also a little less pulling it looks like on my shirt right on my right at my keister level. <laughs> and then if you look at my back from the side view you can see that roll that's right under my bra strap that has really flattened out a lot. And then also my butt doesn't look so bubbly <laughs> in the after shot. I also noticed that my arms are starting to thin out too. I can really see it in the front right by my armpit. And then I can also see it just above my elbow and just below my elbow for that matter. So now let's take a look at the actual inches lost because that is a huge non-scale victory, I feel. And one of the things I really want to point out is you can see on my waist I was 54 inches, now I'm 50 inches. I lost five inches around my hips. Oh, I lost two inches in my chest, so that, there you go. That's why the pictures showed what they did. Each thigh lost three inches. And one of the biggest telling things is, you remember how I said my ankles and feet were always swollen when I weighed 319 pounds? I was shocked when I took the measurements and I had lost two 
inches in my ankles. That's a huge loss, but it's so nice not to feel that pressure anymore down there. So I lost a total of 24 and a quarter inches all over my body. I lost two feet of extra meat. So that, that's a good non-scale victory. Also some other non-scale victories. I am not huffing and puffing all the time. I can walk across the room without getting out of breath. I can stand up now from bed without pain. I can roll over in my bed. All of these non-scale victories far outweigh all the bad habits I was doing before. So where I plan to go from here is I want to incorporate more exercise. I feel that the 35 pound weight loss has enabled me to do other things and I want to start pursuing them a little bit stronger, taking it slow and steady. Again, I don't want injury, so I want to walk more often and maybe a little longer. So I, what I have done is I've started incorporating a one mile walk. It's not a fast walk, I do it in about 30 minutes. When I am able to do that mile walk in 20 minutes, that's when I will up the length of that walk to maybe a mile and a half keeping it to a half an hour walk. So moving forward, that's what I'm going to do. I also want to let you know that all my weight loss vlogs will be uploaded every Wednesday. We're gonna make it Weight Loss Wednesday. If you're new to this channel and you don't wanna miss future weight loss vlogs, be sure to click on the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you're notified every time I upload these videos. I hope that if you are struggling with your weight and on your own weight loss journey, I hope some of the information I shared is helpful. Please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to see what you're doing and how what kind of progress you're making on your weight loss journey. And don't forget to like this video if things I said resonated with you as well. And if you know of anybody who might get some benefit from the information I've uh, talked about on this video, please go ahead and share this video with them as well. I'll see you Wednesday.